Here in front of us today, we have my all-time least favorite machine to work on, the A1425 from 2012. So this is actually a fairly interesting case. We have a board that looks completely clean with no liquid damage that clicks. So we're going to plug this in, and I'm going to take off my mic, and I'm going to hold it up to the board. You hear that clicking? Typically, th that's either a coil or a MOSFET. So if we have a short, sometimes a, mo a coil, it when that circuit goes under load, that coil is going to vibrate a little bit and you're going to hear that click. Another case could be a bad MOSFET doing that. So the first thing we're going to check is PP bus G3 hot. So here's our meter. We're going to measure. And I want you guys to pay close attention. Let's move this to some place so you can see this really well. Pay close attention to what the meter does when we measure on the coil. So I could kind of hear pulsing right over here. So I'm going to check... Um, PP bus, which shows up right over here, and watch, pay close attention to what the meter does. So as it's as it's clicking, notice that pattern. So see how that that meter is like cycling back and forth. So most likely, what's going on? PP bus is cycling too fast for the meter to pick up, and that's we see the cycle at the same time we see the click. So we're gonna go ahead and take this board out and see what we find on it. Most likely, we have an issue within our PP bus G throughout generation circuit. Most likely, the ISL failed, and then took out both the um, creation MOSFETs for that circuit. Another possibility is we have a short on PP bus, possibly the CPU MOSFETs that's causing the circuit to go under too much load and behave abnormally. So we'll see what we find here. Okay, our board is out. Anybody that has disassembled this machine before knows that the engineer that designed this probably wasn't in the best state upstairs at the time of designing it because there's just hidden traps everywhere. It's not designed well. It's really, really designed lousy. It's probably why they only made it for, you know, less than a year. Anyway, let's go ahead and look under the scope and see what we find on this board. Um, this is an 820-3460. I mean, um, yeah, 3462. If my memory hasn't failed me on this board. So let's look at our ISL. So the first area I suspect is an issue around our ISL. Notice somebody looks like they might have replaced the backlight fuse at one time. That's not really relevant right now, though. So let's continue on. And what do you know? I see corrosion already. I think this is corrosion. So here is our 3.3 volt and 5 volt rail regulator right here. This is the TPS 51980. There's a little bit of corrosion there. I don't think that's going to do anything, though. I really don't. But this looks like there might have been liquid, so we're going to note this. Let's carry on. So we're going to keep looking. Here's our ISL. Looks totally fine. There's nothing here. The current sensing resistors look okay. There's no holes in them, nothing that suggests an issue. Carry on. Another common thing, so, is junk around the SMC is common on this board. Looks like, okay, somebody was here before. You can see there is some uh, rework here. That cap isn't really soldered too well, so this has been messed with. Or this is, this could very well be, do I see a tag on this? Is this an Apple refurb board? Because that looks like Apple, typical Apple refurb work. I don't see it. Maybe it was reworked at the factory. I don't know. This area doesn't look right to me. It looks like there was junk here at one time. Hard to say. Might have been... I think this was an Apple refurb board, so that could explain some of it. Okay, so I don't see much. So I don't see much that would concern me except for that TPS 51980. We know our clicking came from around this area, so I mean around here. So I'm suspecting one of these MOSFETs, and what do you know? What's this? Look at that. So just with visual inspection, we could see this is not right. What this looks like to me, okay, so this is one of two things. Either this exploded, or somebody that did not know what they were doing replaced this. So this, to me, looks like it got hot. See this coloration? It's probably hard to see. The camera might not even pick that up, but if in person you could see a di dif difference in the coloration. This looks like it got hot. There's a solder ball here. This definitely doesn't look right, but this looks like someone, somebody was probing here at one point. 
and this is definitely not soldered well. So anytime, so let's say if this was, so case, let's say case A is that somebody replaced this FET. They did not solder stuff right, and that joint broke. Well, the gate voltages or the gate, the gate pin of the FET is very uh, sensitive to resistance. So if the resistance is too high in that gate pin, let's say if the solder joint cracks and breaks, then what's going to happen is the FET is going to fail and take out the whole circuit because it's not going to like that. Gate um, resistance is very critical. It's very dependent on traces and just the overall impedance in the circuit. So if you get anything screwed up there, you're going to get issues like this. And that very well may be the case is that was replaced before and the resistance is now too high. So let's pull up a board view and see what those components actually are for and if those are actually for PP bus. I think they are, but let's double check. Okay, here is our FET that looks screwed up and that was clicking. Um, all the pins that look messed up were ground, so most likely they didn't have a very good hot air station when it was replaced. Like I said, I don't really know the history of this, um, but this is going to be for open up our schematic drag it over here to this screen it's Q7030 as I said prior this is going to be for our ISL I mean for PP best generation we see it goes through L7030 which is our inductor F7040 which is our fuse and then out comes PP best G3 hot so this is a common mistake that people make when they when this FET goes bad they inject voltage they see oh the FET gets hot they replace the FET and then the new FET shorts right away because they don't replace the controller with it. So if you have an issue on something here, let's say Q7030 gets hot. If you have a board that has two transistors on the output for this, you need to replace both transistors that this, this part of this chip controls because if you don't, they're going to screw each other up. So let's say one FET is shorted, you replace that FET in the controller. Well, that one remaining FET is going to screw up the other FET and then the controller. So you need to replace all of them. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to replace U7000, which is our ISL6259, as well as our um, transistor right here, which is Q7030. Our coil and our fuser is going to be fine because there's no short, and obviously the coil isn't just going to die out of nowhere. All right, as always, we're going to put a little flux down. Get on our hot air. I don't want to melt anything. It's in a kind of a bad area because of the fan connector, so I'm going to try to blow the air away and it's going to melt. We'll try and be careful. Worst comes to worst, we replace a connector. It's not the end of the world. That is off little bit of meltiness in our connector should still be fine I'm gonna go ahead and replace the ISL now ISL is gonna be right down here on this board now you may wonder should I replace Q7155 and all that the other FETs that the ISL controls and the answer is maybe it's on a case-by-case -case basis sometimes you'll have to but the vast majority of times you really don't so you should be safe this new chip on. I honestly try and avoid wicking the old solder away. There's really no need to. So if I can pull it off cleanly and there's enough on the pads, I'll just solder it down like this. There's that. In the case of the Fed, I'll go ahead and... Uh, put some leaded there just because I it'll have a lower melting temperature and plus though there's really not enough on these on these joints here
I seriously wonder why this failed. It's kind of suspicious seeing that um, the pins were like that. Because now I'm starting to wonder, it w did somebody try and replace it before? But honestly, this, given the fact that the, the liquid damage indicators are brand new, they're all white, I honestly think this was a, a refurb board. And this is the same kind of rework we usually see on on um, Apple rework boards. They, they really suck, honestly. Just pulling this FET from the donor board. It should be the same one the MacBook Air uses. soldered okay if I plug it in it looks like we still get nothing unfortunately if I measure PP bus G3 hot on the fuse right here I get less than a volt so we're gonna go ahead and do let's try another FET here could also be a bad ISL but I kind of think it's this FET should be uh, should be the same package type as the one on the airs but let's just try a diff different FET just for the heck of it sometimes sometimes I can be funny off donor boards. It's rare, but it happens. So that's off. Grab our new one, which is right here. Just pulled it off the donor. Okay, here's our new chip. Our new MOSFET. That fan connector we're going to have to end up replacing. I already know it. It's too melty and I don't want to leave anything like that on there. So before this goes back, we will likely replace that. You stay down there. You're not going anywhere. That's on there. Give it a little more flux, maybe. That's good to go. Let's let it cool for a sec, and then we'll test it again, and hopefully we will get a uh, fan spin. Okay, so we still have no fan spin. This was kind of my concern with this because I think somebody messed with this prior. And if we look over here too, this FET, we could see this was replaced really, really l just lousy. You can see that. So my concern here is maybe PP bus is there. Maybe it's being pulled down. So what I want to go ahead and do is remove F7040. I believe that's this fuse right over here. F7040. And we are going to recheck with no load on the system so if there if it turns on or if we get 12 volts with no load on the system then we know we have an issue something's pulling it down and that's not good so we're gonna go ahead and remove this fuse right here and obviously we're probably gonna end up taking out this fan connector maybe I can get it with the iron but if not I don't want to hurt that fan connector but probably gonna happen unfortunately so let's go ahead and remove this If I can get my iron in here and get it hot enough, I should be able to take this off with no hot air. Just need a big blob and to get it hot enough. Don't reuse this fuse after you've done this too, please. I know people do that. Don't do that. That's bad. There we go. It's off. Well, partially off. Let me grab tweezers. I should be able to get it now off. See that? Perfect. So now that's off. Let's just check for a short on both sides just in case we're missing something. 
know I've been trying to do the short format videos, but this one might go a little bit longer. Okay, there's no short on either side. Doesn't mean there's not a problem on either side, though, because I've seen it sometimes where you won't get a measurable short, but you turn it on, it'll just pull it down because it's only shorting when it's on. So let's check voltage now. And on this side, so the system side, we should get nothing. We still get around a volt, that's okay. And we get 12.59 volts on the other side. So 12.59 volts on the other side means it's technically working. So the circuit's working now. We have a fixed circuit. So I'll show you guys this. So our meter is right here. You can see that. I wish Flair made one that would show on the screen, but they don't. So on this side, we have 12.59 volts. So this is basically the circuit's working. So now what I have to do is I have to inject voltage on the system side to see what's getting hot. My guess it's going to be this FET right here that somebody changed for the CPU. That's not good. Um, so hopefully the CPU is okay. Anytime you have a situation like this, start low. Do not send 12 volts into it because with 12 volts, you're just going to ruin it if it does have a short. So we're going to start at like maybe one volt, maybe a little bit less, and we're going to take some thermal images and see what gets hot and then go from there. Um, I'm guessing it's going to be that FET. If I had to guess, I could probably just remove that and say that was the only issue, but the controller is probably also going to be dead. So let's go ahead and inject voltage and see what gets hot. Okay, actually screw that. Let's look at this uh, board view and let's see if we could remember previously in the video. I didn't think this would be related, but it looks like it is related. So Q7220, this is our one that looks like it was soldered lousy. Where does this go? Remember this chip that had a little bit of corrosion on the leg? Well, guess what? This is probably our issue. I almost think this wasn't soldered. I think this was just like this to begin with, and I think it might have exploded from the little bit of corrosion. And now this didn't even look like liquid damage. This was just, um, just looked like uh, maybe a little condensation or something. And PP5VS4, you can see this. Goes right to that FET that looks like that. So we're going to get rid of this. We're going to get rid of this. And then we should get a working board now. Okay, looking at this again, this really wasn't soldered like this. You could see where it just blew out right here. It's This is actually easier to see on the camera than it is in real life, but that blew out right there. So that's not good. This is a, what's that say, 588872D. Five, five so yeah, this is a common chip. Let's go ahead and take this off, and as well as the uh, 51980. That probably made a pretty good pop when it ex did explode. Now thinking about this, the FET, the PP bus circuit was probably fine. So we probably didn't even have to touch the, that all along. But I wanted to take care of that just because of how those pins look. They didn't look right to me. So maybe we did have a combination issue. Maybe the load from this being bad caused that FET to fail and blow out those pins like that. I don't know. But I feel better, I feel better with that other FET replaced and the ISL replaced just in case. You just, you just never know. This didn't look right to me. Some more flux. And this chip is incredibly common on board, so we should be able to take this from a 3476 or similar. Should be soldered. I don't really like this side though, so we'll give it another. I don't like that. I don't like that at all, actually. Let's see. Yeah, if you get a little too much solder on the center pads, this will happen, so... It's making contact. Not like I'd like it to, though, so we will touch this up with the iron. Let's 
well, why we have an iron. Again, I said like the uh, gate resistance is critical, so I don't like to have any bad solder joints on these because you can kill the circuit again. And that's just a waste of time. But we solder it like that. See, now we have beautiful joints. Do it on the other side too. Board is actually pretty hot still. Focus. There, that should be good. Let's go for the 51980 now, which is on this side. Dot is in the top corner. Yeah, it's hard to believe that little... That's all it takes to kill a MacBook, is that little tiny bit of corrosion. It didn't even look liquid damage. This wasn't liquid damage. If you have any dust or anything, and you bring your computer into a humid environment, this is what happens. You get a little bit of... Um, a little bit of condensation that builds on there, and then little droplet and dead this is more common in human environments too this uh, this computer actually came from uh, southern United States which is a very humid common uh, comment um, environment so you will get issues like this nothing fails for no reason that's one one thing to understand with electronics. I see it a lot. People say, oh, it just died for no reason. No, it did not. You had a reason behind that. It just didn't die out of nowhere. There's always a reason. Either age is a reason, believe it or not, from electron migration, or you messed with it and it caused it to break and you just don't want to admit it, or you had liquid or excessive heat, there's always a cause behind something failing. It's just not going to fail out of nowhere. More reason to keep your stuff dusted out and clean. And don't bring, this is another bad one I see, don't bring your computer in the bathroom when you take a shower. That is dumb. Because, again, condensation will form and then you get issues like this. So don't do that. We're going to need to scrape a little bit. Actually, let me wick. So after I wick, this might straighten up a little bit. Just that one pin is really, really messed up. See that? Good as new after wicking. Good as new. This is too much on the center pad. This looks like just lousy. So, we can fix this with more flux. And our iron is a little bit too hot. That's why we had issues like that and burned it off too quick. So, we'll lower that back down to 640 degrees Fahrenheit. I get asked sometimes, well, what temperature should I solder at? The best answer to that is how is how you prefer. So I can't really say, I can't really tell you what's a preferred, the best temperature, because that depends on the user. So certain people prefer different temperatures. I know some people that won't go above 540 or look at me like I'm crazy when I say 640. So... It depends on how you feel. I know other people that like to run their irons at 840. Personally, I don't. That's just too hot for me. It just doesn't do a good job. So we're just going to scrape with this until we have a nice good joint like that. We're good. And this should straighten up. But we have a little bit too much, so we will take care of that. I'm sorry this went out of focus. There we go. Should be good. We'll clean this up a little bit. I don't want too much junk under the chip when we solder the new one on.
Then with any luck, we will get a working laptop after this. Got to put that fuse back, of course. It's down there. That looks good enough. Alright, time for the fuse. Since I do see people make this mistake a lot, I'll show you guys again. If you don't want to use hot air, what you do to make it look neat and, you know, not sloppy, you wick away one side. So, one side. Grab your part. Line it up, right? Done. You just want it to, you just don't want it to stick up like that. So that's the easiest way to do it. And now the moment of truth. What happens? Do we get a spinning fan? Or do we get more crippling disappointment? Charger. Plug it in. We get a green light. Come on, green light. And a fan spin. Imagine that. So, this is fixed. We will ultrasonic, as always. Um, and then, uh, after it's passed testing, I'll do a follow up, show it's working in the enclosure and all good to go. But 99% of the time, you get that fan spin, it's good to go. So, Right, the MacBook is assembled, and as you can see, it's all good to go working in the OS. Uh, no issues, no dead CPU, so we're good to go. Thank you for watching, and I hope this video helps you.